Hey, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Supermicro chassis SCE 813M and specifically the motherboard inside is going to be the X9 SCL, the X9 SCL F, and the X9 SCL Plus F. Let's get started. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Supermicro X9 SCL and the different variations of it. Uh, if you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, let's get rolling. Um, first things first, uh, you know, we, we discussed there's three different types of boards within the uh, X9 SCL. Um, you're going to have the uh, dash F, which is going to mean it's going to have IPMI, and then you're also going to have the plus dash F, uh, which also has IPMI. If you don't get the dash F, there's no IPMI. Um, and the only real difference that I've seen between the um, plus or, uh, plus dash F and the regular dash F uh, is just um, uh, some gigabit ports in the back. Um, and I'm sure there's probably some other technical dif uh, technical differences, but uh, as far as this video is concerned, we're really mainly going over the memory uh, and the CPUs. Um, and the nice thing about all three of those boards is the memory is the exact same for all of them uh, and so is the CPUs which makes it uh, very easy from a uh, data center compatibility standpoint so on that note the CPUs that this accepts there's a one CPU socket it's a LGA 1155 socket uh, there are a couple different CPUs one that we recommend uh, is an Intel Xeon E3 1200 V1 or V2 series uh, specifically I'm uh, partial to I like the E3 1240 V2 and the E3 uh, 1270 V2 those seem to be uh, the biggest winners that we've seen um, in the data center community with and what their customers like uh, you can also use uh, second and third gen uh, core i3 processors uh, and you can also use a couple of different intel um, pentium and celeron series processors so uh, on that note uh, let's start talking about some of the ram uh, you can use a couple different sizes of ram you can go as low as a uh, one gig two gig a uh, four gig or all the way up to an eight gig no unfortunately there are no 16 gigs uh, 16 gig ddr3 uh, acm buffer was never invented uh, so eight gig will be the top of the line for you um, there are four slots inside this system it accepts ddr three memory um, there's a number of different speeds you can use you can go as low as 1066 1333 or all the way up to 1600 megahertz you can also technically put in 1866 uh, it'll just drop back down to 1600 um, as far as the types of RAM you can use, there's only one type of RAM, which is ECC unbuffered, which is your more traditional server UDIM. Uh, unfortunately, no, you can't use uh, ECC register, which is an RDIM, and no, you can't use uh, load reduce, which is an LR DIM. Um, as far as uh, the max for ECC unbuffered, you can do uh, four by eight gig for a total of 32 gigabytes at uh, 1866 megahertz. So now that we know a little bit more about it, let's go ahead and open it up. I wanna show you how to physically uh, install the DIMMs, show you a little bit about the memory channels in case you are only gonna put in, let's just say one or two DIMMs. Um, but before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear. Really, you never wanna be inside a machine without ESD gear, so we'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from getting electrostatic discharge. All right, so first things first, you're gonna push these two tabs down right here. You're simply gonna push it down and pull out, and you'll see it's gonna just pop out right here, and you can lift the top up. Really very simple. Uh, as we discussed, there's one CPU, which is a LGA1155 socket. Um, personally, like I said, I like to put in uh, E3-1240V2s or E3-1270V2s. Uh, there's, here's your four DIMM slots. Uh, you will notice the DIMM slots are color coded. This is very helpful because there are two DIMM, uh, I'm sorry, two uh, memory channels and two DIMMs per memory channel. Um, and Supermicro has labeled it on the board, which also makes it very helpful. So if you look uh, right here, which you probably can't see on camera, this is actually uh, channel one and this is A1. So uh, that's the start of the channel. Um, and this is the second channel over here and this is B1 right here. So this will go A1. A2, B1, B2, okay? So if you were only putting in two DIMMs, for instance, uh, the best way to actually do that is to put it in the uh, two black DIMM slots and leave the two blue DIMM slots empty. And people ask, well, why would you do this? Um, why can't I just put them into uh, A1 and A2? Well, really, it's uh, uh, pretty simple. It's just to maximize your overall performance. Um, if you uh, think of it uh, kind of logically, um, you, you don't want to overload just channel one, uh, it will be taken on the entire load. Um, what you really want to do is have a nice 
uh, balance the load across all the channels so you have two different uh, channels running and you're maximizing your overall performance that way now personally uh, I, I recommend for this machine to put in four eight gigs uh, and just get the most out of it and have 32 gigabytes but I understand that uh, sometimes uh, machines like this are really great for uh, low-end applications so sometimes people really only need you know eight or 16 gigs uh, but it, I do still recommend the 32 gigs because realistically nowadays you can get for you know roughly 140 bucks you can get four eight gigs um, depending on the the speed and really get a huge boost in your overall performance so that's one thing that I always recommend to customers so anyhow, anyhow on that note let me show you guys how to actually install the dims uh, before we do I want to note right here you will see there is a, a little notch in the middle this is known as a key this key is very important because the key is not in the very center it's just off to the little bit and you, you need to know it because when you're loading the dims there's a little plastic notch in the middle so you have to make sure you line your dim up properly otherwise you could potentially damage the leads on the dim or you could damage the dim slot itself which sometimes means you have to buy a whole new motherboard and nobody wants to go through that over just installing a dim uh, the wrong way so that's one of the things I always point out to everyone before you install your dims it's a real simple mistake to make uh, and it's real easy to do um, so it's just something I always point out so uh, on that note the proper way for us to line it up is going to be this way we're going to go ahead and put it in and you'll notice right now I'm, I'm not physically holding the module the module is in the slot uh, but unfortunately the module is not properly seated and this is something we hear all the time where customers think that they have a bad module and really the module is not fully seated so I always tell uh, people to listen for these two clicks right here so listen click one it's kind of quiet and then click two back here yeah well these didn't really make any clicks but they basically pop in uh, to the tabs right here um, and you'll see you can look at the actual module on the side of the module um, if y'all can zoom in right here the the side of the module actually has these little notches um, and what happens is the tab will pull up onto the notch and actually pull uh, the, the gold leads in and that's how you know it's fully inserted so uh, it's just a, a, like I said a very simple mistake that uh, I always tell people I don't care if you've been doing it 20 years or this is your first day on the job uh, anyone can make that mistake so um, and as we get going over here I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, do the the far outside uh, just because all of these cables are in the way and I don't want to be kind of stuck when, I, when there's another module right there just give myself a little bit of extra room to work since this is going to be a, a trouble spot over here with the cables okay so being kind of gentle with it because I just want to make sure we get it properly in and honestly it's not fully seated right now there we go so you heard the click on that one <laughs> so unfortunately the, the way this is designed the cables are right on the module which I'm not a huge fan of but realistically it'll be okay um, it's not like this system is a rugged system it's just going to be in a data center um, so it's not something we really need to worry about it's just something I always like to point out when you're installing the DIMMs just to be really careful since you are going to have the cables right on it. So, okay, just like that, we were able to put in uh, 32 gigabytes, and really you could see it was pretty easy in a matter of a couple of minutes. Uh, you could really boost the performance, and that's one thing I always tell customers is that, you know, uh, if you're looking to extend the life of your server, and you don't want to have to upgrade to a new server right now maybe you're on a budget or you just don't want to even have to deal with the hassle because you have you know bigger fish to fry uh, the easiest band-aid is to upgrade your RAM um, and, and CPU sometimes as well but really the upgrade the RAM is will get you the biggest boost in your performance overall um, so for you know 140 150 bucks depending on where the market's at at the time you'll you'll be able to um, to order 32 gigs and really get a lot of um, uh, a big increase in the performance of of your X9 SCL um, for for really you know pennies on the dollar. So anyhow, on that note, if you guys actually need any upgrades yourself, uh, do us a favor. Email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Uh, we honestly have probably two, maybe three thousand of these in stock right now, so we'd definitely be able to uh, to help you out with some of your upgrades and. If you made it this far in the video, hey, do us a favor and uh, click that like and smash that, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.